To say that Critical Role has achieved meteoric success would be a massive understatement. What began as a D&D livestream on the Geek & Sundry Twitch channel became its own company, created a bunch of new shows, endless merchandise, and multiple comic book series, became an official D&D setting with its own source book, sold out venues all over the country for its live shows, started a non-profit and a publishing company, and oh yeah, raised $11 million from almost 89,000 backers for an animated show that was then picked up by Amazon for two seasons before we even had a glimpse of one. The show where a bunch of nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons & Dragons has blown up over the six years since it started, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. Six years feels like a long time, and the show has come such a long way. But for a company like CR, six years is just getting started. So as it continues to expand, I can only imagine what we're going to see come out of it. Maybe Matt's dreams of a critical role land could eventually come true, and I'm only half joking. But realistically, we can expect Critical Role to grow and enter even more into the mainstream than it already has. The main way I see this happening is with a Critical Role video game. On a recent podcast with Philip DeFranco, Matt had this to say about a CR game. Because if you have comic books and uh, the board games and, and all that stuff, when are we going to see a Critical Role video game? Oh, man. Oh, hopefully some point soon. That'd be awesome. Like that that would be a a, a, a unique kind of chapter book yeah, it feels, end in my life. It feels so nothing is in the works. Yet. And it might be a while till we officially hear about anything of the sort. But it's easy to believe that the ball is going to start rolling soon on some form of video game project. Whether it's Amazon after buying the rights to the show, which let's hope not with the way their other video game projects have gone, or another company altogether, Someone is going to see the money waiting to be made, the potential of a critical role video game, and they're going to put it into motion. The following question then, is what will this game actually be? With six years worth of stories, characters, and side content, Critical Role's well of possibilities runs extremely deep. So for fun, let's start with some unlikely ways they could go with the property, and work our way towards the surefire options. These wouldn't be anyone's first choice, but CR has such a huge cast of characters that I could see us getting something like a fighting game, hero shooter, or MOBA. When I picture any of these in concept, they would no doubt be a blast to play. Imagining how my favorite characters would translate into a fighting game is endlessly entertaining. Fighting your friends as Scanlan, flying around on Bigby's hand, or thunder-stepping all over the place as Ford would be a ton of fun. Not to mention the laundry list of great locations that they could pull for stages. If they went with one of these ideas, they would definitely see success. But if you asked the critters what they wanted from a CR game, these probably wouldn't be at the top of the list. Something that's a little more within the D&D tabletop realm would be a card game, maybe even based off of a physical version. I could see this going the Magic the Gathering Hearthstone route of a full-blown trading card game, or something more like a board game that you buy standalone, possibly with some expansions down the road. We've seen the Darrington Press lineup for the rest of the year, and nothing like this is in the works, but I could totally see them doing it sometime in the future. They're planning to put something out every single quarter, so we could see them rapidly approach this idea. Collecting your favorite CR characters and moments in print form would be a lot of fun, as would building decks according to themes of different continents, campaigns, heroes, or villains. I wholeheartedly believe this is something we're going to see in the future, but not necessarily digitally, at least at first. PlayStation's third-person action-adventure formula has been repeatedly successful in both sales and reception. Controlling Critical Role in such a high-budget AAA title of that ilk would be incredible. But these games typically only follow a single playable protagonist, and playing a narrative CR game as a single character wouldn't feel quite right. Fleshing out at least seven playable characters, Building out beautiful environments, bombastic set pieces, and high fidelity visual effects for a game as massive as an adaptation of Critical Role would be a daunting task for any video game developer. To get something like this, it would have to be chopped up into a bunch of pieces like Final Fantasy VII Remake, and even then it would be difficult to make the entire cast playable and still have any gameplay depth. If I'm playing an adaptation of Campaign 1, I want to be able to jump to Amon, and then Vasselheim, and then Whitestone, and have all of it contained within one experience. This concept is fun to dream about, and might work for a lot of other properties, but not Critical Role. 
If you translated the combat of D&D directly into a video game as is, it would be closest to a strategy RPG like Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics. In between battles and cutscenes, they could go the Fire Emblem Three Houses route and allow you to talk to NPCs and explore common areas like Grayskull Keep, Scanlan's Magnificent Mansion, or Caleb's nascent Nine-Sided Tower. It would be a shame to miss out on exploring all of the awesome places Matt has whipped up over the years, so maybe they could include that somehow too. I can already see myself getting addicted to the gameplay and replaying this game over and over, but in the other aspects of Critical Role which are arguably their biggest draw, this game would have to make a few sacrifices. So those are some unlikely but fun possibilities. But at the end of the day, there is only one genre that could best represent every facet of Critical Role. It's phenomenal combat, characters, story, and setting. The genre that owes everything to Dungeons & Dragons, an RPG. Now, the problem is that when I say RPG, it could put any one of a variety of ideas in your head. You might envision a turn-based JRPG, an open-world western or CRPG, or a fast-paced action RPG. Let's break down the pros and cons of each, and what I think would be best in the end. A JRPG could be fun, but I don't think it would be the perfect match for CR. The highlights of most JRPGs to me are the party, NPCs, and their banging soundtracks. Having a critical role game with a focus on those three aspects would be amazing, but for what fans of CR have come to expect, it will need to be firing on all cylinders. JRPGs tend to be the most linear of the RPGs, with no dialogue options or branching narrative, and usually put you on a very direct path through the world's locations. Now that might sound like a good fit because they would be adapting a story that's already been told, but in practice it could feel constricting. I would want the game to open up a lot quicker than I would expect a JRPG to. Obviously the story would be following a set narrative that's already been established, and things aren't going to be drastically different at its conclusion. But the story could be tweaked to allow for some more typical RPG freedom in ways like letting the player tackle the Chroma Conclave in a different order or with different methods, and the same for collecting the Vestiges of Divergence. In a JRPG, you would be following the events of the campaign beat for beat. I love those stories and would gladly go through them in that format. But if we finally got the chance to step foot in Exandria and explore it ourselves, for it to end up being more of a guided experience with few opportunities to meander, it would be a slight letdown. And the final note on JRPGs is their combat. I've played plenty of games with turn-based combat, and I love it when it's done well and fits the game. But it wouldn't be exciting enough for Critical Role. Now you might be saying, wait, Shimshazar, that makes no sense. Dungeons & Dragons is already a turn-based game. Yes, I know. But at the same time, it's so incredibly cinematic and flashy with the players describing their actions in such visceral detail that the repetitious nature of a turn-based game wouldn't be delivering on that visual spectacle that everyone is picturing as they watch the show. Even one of the most stylish games in existence, Persona 5, can get monotonous due to its turn-based combat. A CRPG would offer a good deal more freedom than a JRPG in both combat and your path through the narrative. I'm going to bundle Western RPGs in with CRPGs because they somewhat blend together. And by Western RPGs, I mean the ones more along the lines of Bioware's games, rather than something like Skyrim or Outer Worlds, which would fit CR even less than a JRPG. The best D&D games have been CRPGs, namely the Baldur's Gate series. And some of the most recent, closest approximations of D&D in video game form have been CRPGs like the critically acclaimed Divinity Original Sin 2, which even included a Game Master mode to create adventures you could run for your friends. Those two worlds are colliding, and Baldur's Gate 3 being developed by Larian Studios, the creators of Divinity. From everything we've seen of the game, it looks like Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be the best officially licensed D&D game we've ever gotten. Larian gives the player plenty of tools and abilities that all combine and affect each other to give that same sandbox, anything's possible feeling that D&D provides. If BG3 turns out as excellent as it seems it will be, then why not have the next officially licensed D&D game be a Critical Role CRPG in the same form? Keep the same general mechanics, set it in Exandria, plug in the CR cast and you could have the trifecta of a phenomenal CR, D&D, and CRPG game. And Larian would be a great choice to develop it after they're done with Baldur's Gate. I would be extremely happy to see this become a reality. It would have all of the necessary components to deliver a fantastic Critical Role gaming experience. But I'm greedy, and I want more. When we get a Critical Role game, 
I want to personally control Vex flying on her broom or Grog cutting through foes with Craven Edge. I need to cast Widowgast Web of Fire or endlessly stunning strike my enemies as a bow. I want to be in the action. My personal choice for a CR game would be something akin to an action RPG. Last year, FF7 Remake was such a new and interesting melding of the JRPG and action RPG genres. I think Critical Role could do the same, but with a western angle. I imagine it largely similar to FF7 Remake, swapping between the party members to control one at a time, with each feeling drastically different from one another, and allowing for plenty of customization in abilities, magic items, and spells. In absolute honesty, I would be over the moon to get a single Critical Role game of any genre. But when I imagine taking on Thordak, throwing Whisper to teleport on top of him as Vax before swapping to Scanlan to sock him with Bigby's hand, then to Percy to charge up some trick shots with Cabal's Ruin, it's just too good. It's the pinnacle of what a CR game could be. And if they could somehow make multiplayer work and deliver on the kind of gameplay that last year's Avengers game had promised, that would be icing on the Slayer's cake. Most Critical Role games would have some form of swapping out abilities and items, like Grog with the Dwarven Thrower, Blood Axe, Craven Edge, or the Titan Stone Knuckles. But only an action RPG would really let you feel what it's like to personally wield them. In D&D, combat rounds last 6 seconds. There's no way to have that work in a tabletop format, so we roll initiative and all wait patiently for our turn to come around. I would love if the CR game would be the one to make that hectic, fast-paced combat a reality. Imagine running in as Yasha and letting out your battle cry as fireballs Eldritch Blast. and serrated lollipops fly overhead. I just can't imagine anything better than that. I picture the game looking almost identical to FF7 Remake in its combat, but in all other aspects it would look like any of the previously mentioned critically acclaimed CRPGs, full of dialogue options, meaningful exploration, and branching narratives, especially in side quests. It'd be awesome if they fleshed the story out with some more side quests, like with Victor the Black Powder Merchant, who became such an iconic character after only appearing three times over Campaign 1's 115 episodes. I'm sure in any kind of Critical Role RPG, he would be a character we could return to at any time. And it would be awesome if he could have some kind of additional side quest chain. The same goes for so many other incredible NPCs that could be used to add some side content to flesh out the towns in the game. This action RPG idea could work perfectly for either campaign. I do worry that whatever game they make will skip straight to Campaign 2 because it's become more popular over the last three years, but I would rather them adapt Campaign 1 for two reasons. First, it just makes sense to do the first campaign and then the second, and two, Campaign 1 is finished. They had a few one-shots to tie up some loose ends, but it seems like Vox Machina's book is officially closed, making it easier to adapt and feel like a complete story. I've been under the assumption that the narrative in any CR game would be a start-to-finish adaptation of one of the campaigns. It's possible they could do any amount of things with the story, like following a side character or filling in some of the gaps that we didn't see, but I think most critters would want to be put in the driver's seat of the stories we already know and love. Critical Role is just one big act of theater. A CR game could deliver on the fantasy every critter has of stepping in the shoes of their favorite characters, shouting Jenga or I would like to rage, exploring wonderful locations that we've only seen in fan art, and taking control of how those big highlight moments play out. An action RPG, especially in multiplayer where each player could choose their respective dialogue, could be an awesome way to fulfill that fantasy. A potential Critical Role video game adaptation is such a fun and interesting thing to speculate about. It's comprised of a cast of mainly video game actors playing a game that has influenced so much of the video game industry. I think with that fact, and the immense success that Critical Role is seeing with no signs of slowing down anytime soon, a video game adaptation is inevitable. So with it coming eventually, what do you want to see from a CR video game? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please subscribe to help my channel grow and click the bell to see what I make next. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Shimshazar, and I'll see you next time.